let's keep this party rolling, right? Shouldn't that be the theme of everything? Which is, you know, I think I started a couple episodes by saying, uh, let's get this party started. It's like, let's keep this fucker rolling. So let, let's talk about the people involved in selling your practice and preparing to sell your practice. Because again, it's funny, we talk about selling your practice, like you should wait. And I think too many people do wait. And I think too many people start to ask the questions, the straight up questions like I gave you, I don't know, a few episodes ago, they start to wait too late. You should be asking those early on. They may not be a priority today to answer, but like I presented them, there are priorities within there. And if you're asking those questions, you're set up for short-term and long-term success, my friends, and then prioritize them. Okay. So preparing to sell your practice, the people who are involved, I brought that up, advisors, brokers, brokers, advisors, buyers, sellers, blah, blah, blah. I want to use this analogy. I really, I really believe it fits best. And it's weird. I started having someone explain all these to me. And the second the real estate conversation came up, I'm like, oh, I get it. So, right. You want to sell your house because I'm talking to you, this seller. You want to sell your house. You don't freaking call someone, right? You, you don't put a for sale sign up and then call people. You don't call the bank. You don't, you know, you don't look for a real estate broker or a real estate advisor because people do different things, right? The day you put the sign up or maybe even the day you're thinking about it, right? How many times you've done something in your house and you're going, I wonder what this will do to the value of my home when we want to sell it people looking to buy. Well, I'm not going to jump to the buyer side. Let's just stay on the seller side, right? You don't put a sign up and then start to do the work. And you, not only that, you don't do work in your home without some kind of understanding or awareness, acknowledgement of what that means to the value of the house. No matter how long you plan on staying there, no matter what you plan on doing it, selling it, giving it to your kids, donating it to someone, it doesn't matter. You still think the same way. This is how you think about your practice. Okay. So let's talk about this. Would you sell your house without a real estate broker? I wouldn't. And there's a high risk if you do. More than just the legal reasons, right? Many real estate brokers work as advisors. And I would argue from what I've learned, the only difference between an advisor and a broker, and I'm going to get some pushback, but on paper, the only difference is the license, right? Brokers are licensed. So, I mean, a real estate broker has to adhere to rules and regulations, which there's safety in that. So I'm going to use the example last time I sold my place because of my real estate broker is my advisor. And so what do you do? You said, we think we're, we're, we're thinking about selling. And then they start asking you some questions and just get you thinking. And they pull some stuff together. And maybe they put together, pull together the value, right? Things you have to deliver, right? So think about this process. Now, if you don't have a real estate broker and you're thinking about selling, what are you doing? You start asking friends. You start asking neighbors. You start looking around. You start asking questions. And that's what you should be doing today. And again, I use the example, my real estate broker is a great advisor. I've talked to people who just, their real estate brokers were great transactional people, which was good, but maybe there was more there because, right, your real estate broker mind shows up and says, well, right, and they check on some things and they looked at some things we've done and they verified some things. And then they say, well, you know, Jerry, if you do A in the kitchen, if you replace the appliances and resurface those cabinets, which I know some people who can do it, and it'll run you about $15,000, we should be able to up the asking price by a solid $75,000. So you pause and you think, I can make a $15,000 investment in this place today and get potentially $75,000 out of it for a net gain of $60,000. Would you do it? right? Yet, if you just turned around and got a real estate broker and sold it and got a fair price, did you get the extra? Was there an extra $75,000 tagged on that price? So did you forego an extra $60,000 in your pocket by not having an advisor, by not asking questions, by not saying, how can I drive more value in this transaction? You see where we're going here? 
right? So it's more than just the financials, my friends. And so you will need more than just a financial person, right? You may get a financial advisor, right? You may get someone to look at your finances, but you need more than that. Anybody can pull up the comps. Anybody can tell you what the price should go for. But a good advisor can tell you how to add more value and what your ROI is. A good advisor, right? will know the people who can get the work done and know it, know in what context to do it, right? Because I, let's be honest, if you're doing a remodel in your house and you plan on being there for 30 years, you might spend a lot more money on some of the materials and the finish work than just making sure it's good to go, right? Which there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong, right? So you want an advisor that knows people understand there's work to be done here, but it's for this, right? To get it prepared to move not to live in for the next 30 years. There are also people, by the way, and this is where I come in, right? We haven't talked much. I call it the value builder, right? And that's the, that's the person who does the work. You may have a friend who does remodeling work and you may know because everybody else in your building or in your neighborhood has done some work in their kitchen and you may know you need to redo your kitchen. And you've looked at the comps and you looked at the prices that the homes got and what they were valued at when they were bought and what they were sold for later. And then you call in your friend who's a contractor who's done the work in helping people, right? Add value to their homes for sales. Or we should say add value to their home, right? That's where I come in. Hey, Jerry. I know you've worked with clinics to build value. I know you've worked with clinics who were preparing to sell, right? Can you take a look at our systems and our processes to see if they are in line with what people who are selling and getting top multiples have? Sure, can do that, right? So there's these advisors, there's brokers, there's sellers, there's buyers, and then there's value builders right? And if you think about it, everybody stands to win here because guess how the brokers get paid? The same way, my friends. Guess how the advisors get paid? The same way as the real estate people. Who doesn't take a ch chunk of it? The construction guy. He comes in, right? The value builder. The value builder, literally me, comes in for a price, says, I can do this for, and I'm going to make numbers up, $15,000, right? And according to history in this neighborhood and your broker, right, it's going to add another $85,000, $100,000 onto your asking price. So your ROI is running, you know, up to nine, uh, five, to, uh, seven, eight, seven times greater, right? So if we put in 15, we have the opportunity to get a seven times return on that, right? And that's where I come in. And this is where and how I started to get into this process about two years ago, because I started going to a lot of the buyers and said, you know, when you buy some of these clinics, check this out. I think that this is important context for you. And it is a pitch. I've gone to the buyers and said, look, if you buy some of these clinics that don't have their systems optimized and can't show their work, yet they have the people coming in, but they're not doing the work to get them to arrive, pay and stay. I can come in with my paperwork, with my analysis and show you how much you have to gain after you buy them. Now, mind you, they're buying you at a lower multiple because you don't have the reproducibility. You don't have the duplication of the process, right? It's not reproducible. Your results are not reproducible. They can't be duplicated because they're random. It's just a marketing system billing people. And so I say, look, based on these numbers, we can get another $20,000 out of this business a month within six months. So I went to the buyers and said, how about we talk about doing some work together? I'll be the, by the way, I'll be the construction guy that comes in and does the remodel they didn't do before you bought it. And then it'll instantly on paper, right? And be delivering more value. And actually, I don't even want to say on paper because the work, the arrive, pay and stay work delivers more people today who arrive, pay and stay. So I went to the buyers and it seemed to be a little bit of a foreign conversation to be brutally honest. So I started telling people, look, I can do, you know, I can come in for the buyers 
after you sell your clinic and after they've given you a re, uh, reduced multiple based on the work you've done, fair and square, and suck the value back out in six months. Or you can call me up to do the work at a set price and then get a, you know, one, two, three multiple put on and get a huge return. Because remember, another $100,000, sorry, really it comes out of the multiple, right? So you getting to increase the multiple by one or two is on your financials. So that ROI is ginormous, right? So that's how I want you guys to look at the people involved here, right? Brokers, advisors, sellers, buyers, right? Right. What is this person going to help me with? Are they really good tactically, financially? Sure, we need that. Right. Do they have the resources? So if they tell me you're lacking this, this, and this, do they have the resources so that I can do this, by the way, efficiently, not in a fucking year? Right. Because this is one of my pitches. The work I do with people is I get that, you know, we start to make that. I, I set it up on monthly payments. So people start to make the money back in the, and the increase their result of the work, increased arrive, pay, and stay, start to bring in more money. And now you're paying me out of the work. I showed you to do what a beautiful world. And then again, you got a bigger multiple on the end. We all freaking win. So advisors, brokers, brokers for sellers, advisors for sellers, advisors for buyers, brokers for buyers, and then value builders who work on both sides of it, right? So again, I am more than happy to come in and help you. And I help people evaluate. If you guys have seen my post where I talk about the money people are losing in their business, that's the evaluation I do. So again, the work to be done delivers more money into your bottom line for a higher price. And then the work you do, right? We build out the systems and processes of which then you can show the work. So it's a double dip in a fucking awesome way. Plus, you get more money in your pocket and your paycheck now when you start implementing the work. So it's, it's beautiful, right? This whole process, pre-arrival, arrival, course of care, right? Arrive, pay, and stay is built around A, optimizing the financials, right? The revenue, the profit, right? Because add people, take people away, right? Make this system more efficient. And then again, more money on the bottom line means a bigger asking price. Then when you can show how you get that money day in and day out, week out, week to week, month to month, year to year, that's where your multiple comes in. So the value builder probably has the big, yeah, and that's me. So take it with a grain of salt, but prove me wrong. The value builder is going to have a huge impact on the price you walk away with. All right. Those are the people involved, advisors, brokers, sellers, buyers, value builders. Cool. Just like selling your house, my friends, just like doing work. Do you want to do the work today or do you want someone to come behind you? Right. And by the way, either one's okay if you are making a choice because you're aware that that's all available to you. You can say, look, I just want to get out of this. Let's move it. I don't fucking care what they do. Right. As far as the systems go after I leave. And I go, cool, more power to you. And you say, nope, I want the money out. I say, cool, more power to you. Cheers all.